name is Matt Kumpian, and I'm the student assistant here at the Dishman Art Museum. And I'm really excited to tell you about one of my favorite LU alums, Marvin Hayes, with our new series, Highlights from the Permanent Collection. In 1939, Marvin Hayes was born in Canton, Mississippi, but before the age of two, his family moved to Orange, Texas, where his dad was stationed in the Navy in World War II. After the war, his family moved to Hampshire, where he attended Hampshire Fennet High School and graduated in 1958. While in high school, Marvin would take classes at the Bowman Art Museum. Starting his college career at Texas A&M, where he had been offered a football scholarship by the legendary coach Bear Bryant, he unfortunately only had one season of Aggie football before he had to return home to take care of his mother who was sick and help his brother out. He took one semester off and then the fall started at Lamar University where he graduated in 1963 with high honors. After his time at Lamar, he attended Columbia University where he was Professor Mayor Shapiro's assistant for three years. After graduation, he became an award-winning illustrator and was featured in Esquire, Playboy, Red Book, and Reader's Digest, just to name a few. Ever since 1963, Marvin Hayes has been affiliated with the Metropolitan Museum of Art and has worked in almost every single department. When computers became available to the museum, he taught everyone that worked there how to use them and even created processing programs. In 1977, Marvin Hayes paired with the poet James Dickey and used copper plate etchings to illustrate a book titled God's Images, the Bible, A New Vision. This book was very successful, sold many copies, and was reviewed favorably by many people, including the president, Jimmy Carter. This book is now featured in the Vatican Museums in Vatican City. Hayes was a member of the Microsoft development team and the online research panel, and wrote software programs before the invention of Word and WordPerfect. He is in the private collections of Jackie Onassis, David Rockefeller, Barbara Walters, and the third president of Egypt, Anwar Sadat. He now lives in New York City. Thanks to Mac for that great introduction about Marvin Hayes. I want to talk about the two pieces behind me that are actually part of a large collection of his work that was donated to the museum just a few summers ago. The piece on my right is called Myrtle, and the piece on my left is called Callie. I think it's safe to say that Callie is probably our favorite part of the collection. Both of these works are done in egg tempera, which is a process that's been used for centuries, even as far back as the Renaissance. It involves taking the liquid from an egg yolk and mixing it with different pigments to get different colors. It's a very hard process to work in because the egg yolk dries so quickly. I want to take you in closer to get a better look at the detail in which Marvin Hayes works, and then I have a really fun demo planned in which I'm going to attempt to make some egg tempera myself. I think the most fascinating part about Myrtle is the detail that went into creating her hair and face textures. You can get a really good look at the individual strands here. Can you imagine layering each individual strand very carefully with a pigment that's going to dry so quickly? I think this really expresses the talent in which Marvin Hayes has. And here's a better look at the detail of Callie. Notice how this piece has more cross hatch marks to get across the texture of the wood and fur of the dog. I love this piece because every time I look at it, I like to imagine what Callie is thinking. All right, everyone. I've only got two eggs to sacrifice and one go at this really. So we're gonna go ahead and start. First, you need to crack your egg. I've already cracked mine because it's kind of a loud sound. So I've cracked my egg. Then you need to separate your egg yolk from the egg white, just like in baking. The goal being here to not crack your egg yolk. Okay, next I'm going to carefully put the egg yolk in this paper towel to kind of get some of the extra egg white off of there. Kind of move it around a little bit, get it close to the edge. All right. 
carefully wrapped our egg yolk. Then you have to pierce the membrane because we need the yolk and not the membrane. This is the part I was most nervous about and it looks like I'm successful. Typically you're supposed to use fresh eggs and you can do that by doing a water test to see if they're fresh, but since eggs are kind of hard to come by right now, I just thought I'd take my chances. All right, so I've pretty much squeezed out all of the egg yolk. Next, you need to add some distilled water. I've got a syringe here, so I'm gonna go ahead and carefully add some. You can do this, but just a spoon or something. But this kind of just makes the egg yolk a little bit easier to mix. Okay. And then typically you can add some vinegar and maybe even a little bit of oil to the mixture. I've got some vinegar here, so that's what I'm going to go ahead and add. Okay. So let's see, weapon of choice I think is going to be a fork. So by adding the water, it kind of just makes your egg yolk a little bit easier to work with to mix with your pigments. I'm going to go ahead and just pour a tiny bit more into here. So you do that. And you would take your pigment. I've got some good old natural turmeric here. I'm going for a golden color, so I'll see you later. My little drawing that we're going to be going over today. <laughs> this is actually pretty fun. I'm feeling really proud of myself. Okay, so you want to add equal parts pigment to your egg yolk mixture. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to do that as carefully as possible. And that looks about right. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the end of my watercolor brush. So the goal here is just like any painting, you want to start off with your base colors and then move on to your more detailed colors. I went for a golden color because I'm going to paint on a little bit of a drawing of my dog in honor of Callie. I have a yellow lab named Honey, <laughs> and she's kind of golden -y colored. You just go in. Normally for pigments, you would not be using all of your kitchen items, I think. I mean, of course you're gonna use eggs, but I think usually it's more of a mineral thing. So like pulverized elements. I probably could have mixed this a little bit better because it's kind of grainy, but 
I'm no Marvin Hayes, I guess. <laughs> All right, and that's it. A little bit of egg tempera. Thanks for watching, you guys.